storm didn't change our lives. The, the storm made our lives better. Uh, the storm to me was a blessing. It's pretty neat to get somebody out of their house after six months because they're handicapped and you build them a ramp and then get to their car and actually be mobile. A lot of people are still displaced. There are a lot of places that I don't know if they'll ever get repaired. Same as Katrina, you know. It's true that the world is a really hard, hard place. And other than our faith, all we really have are each other. When I talk to people back home, you know, they're busy with their lives and, and they can't understand that why I would run all over the United States here and work for nothing, you know. It's hard for people to, to understand that. But it's, you know, when people are in need, I'm there to help. It's never about the task when you're volunteering. It, what you're doing has nothing to do with anything. It's the fact that you're here. Um, this is an incredibly daunting task for all of us, and we would never be able to do it alone. I could not go to work every day knowing that this was happening in my town and I wasn't a part of it. So I needed to be a part, and so I left my job to, to come to this full time. I really would like to go out, you know, and help somebody that really needs help. And, and it, it's a blessing upon me, you know. I feel good when I leave here. But sometimes it hurts because I hate to leave, you know, work undone. Our whole town, our whole community is so blessed to have these people come in and just give of themselves. And, and they're just unselfish. Sometimes it's better if you don't know anything and you can be taught. Uh, you have to be over 15 to use power tools, and uh, if you're 15 or under, you have to have a guardian with you. But no, we've had people that have never built staircases for inside a house, never used a power tool, and I know it's very rewarding for them when they're done and you can actually use the steps. And So no, you don't have to be skilled. You can cook. You don't have to cook if you're a female. There's men that cook. Uh, there's women that come out on construction. There's guys that have come just to be a photographer and put things together. People savvy with uh, the te technology. If you're willing, please come. We'll put you. There's lots of organizations here that would be glad to put you to work. All you have to bring is a good attitude and, and be willing to camp at a higher level. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs>
Uh, you don't need any special skills other than an eagerness to learn and a willingness to get a little dirty. And, uh, and that's all. So we've got the tools you need. We have the, the teaching that you need to learn how to hang a piece of sheetrock. And we're ready to get volunteers going. So come volunteer on the Jersey Shore. We need your help. I grew up in a middle class family in the middle of the Midwest, and I never had to deal with anything troubling. I had a home, I had a roof over my head, food on the table. Um, my house was never blown over. It was never, we never had tornadoes or hurricanes or anything like that. And until coming to work for the Washington DC JCC and Baron Builders, I never realized that there were so many people out there who really needed help. And giving back makes me feel like I make up for the good that I have in my life. Um, and being able to help others and making a difference in their lives and to give people a place to stay and to live and to call home is really important. I am a two-year already AmeriCorps alumni and I signed up with FEMA Corps, um, which is with the National Corporation for Community Service and the Federal Emergency Management Agency and we're volunteering here today for the St. Bernard Project for Sandy Recovery. To be a team leader is mean you supervise 10 to 12 individuals across the United States that you travel with to different disaster relief projects. They are very good here at the St. Bernard Project at helping you. Um, I, this morning I knew nothing about drywalling and now I'm working with one of my core members to put up panels to finish out this bathroom downstairs. I've got about 10 years of volunteer work and it's all about helping the community. Um, when the community prospers, the people prosper all around. So just being beneficial to my fellow mankind is kind of, it's fulfilling enough for me. Please come out to the Jersey Shore and help with disaster relief or apply to one of the many organizations that are willing to help. What's your name? Uh, my name is Paul Bartley. And where are you from? I'm from Long Island, New York. Uh, my name is Teresa. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Thomas Strakalit. I'm from Brooklyn. Dylan Gafarian. I'm from Long Island, New York. Julia Van Cannon, and I'm from Long Island. Catherine Brucus, and I'm from Queens, New York. Ernie Rosario, I, I live in New Jersey, and this is United Way of Monmouth County. We are a part of AmeriCorps. Well, just so through driving around through New Jersey, you can see all the aftermath of it, and it's sad how even though it's like almost two years later, and there's houses down the Jersey Shore who are still in the, like, horrible, that they still need the help. I go to St. Joseph's College, I'm a junior. I'm a senior, I'm about to graduate. Our school sets it up, it's a yearly program. And I was told about this opportunity to come help out people in New Jersey who really need the help. This is my third spring break trip. Uh, the first year I got into it, my friend wanted me to come, they needed some extra hands. She knew I was good at doing some labor type activities. Um, so I showed up, loved it, and uh, I've been doing it every year since. So you've been here all week, what have you been doing? Oh, we've been doing a lot of things. We help uh, rebuild houses for those who lost their homes during Hurricane Sandy in the Jersey Shore. We've been demolishing as best as we can, helping out those in need. Breaking up some concrete that used to be a foundation for a house. And hauling them out to the dumpsters to be taken away so that other people could come in and put down a new foundation for a new house. So we've been digging, throwing rocks, picking them up, filling up uh, dumpsters, and uh, cracking some jokes at the same time. This is our second site. We actually have another group of students at a, different, a third site, and we have become experts at breaking concrete by this point. Have you ever done this kind of work before? This is my second time. Last year we volunteered in Colorado. And I do volunteer work back in Queens with the AmeriCorps Habitat for Humanity, and it's something I always look forward to. This is my third alternative trip. So I've had some experience, but this is definitely the biggest amount of concrete that I've ever broken. I try to volunteer as often as I can. It was very challenging. The first, the first day I was exhausted, but 
I really got to know my strengths because the second day it was a little bit easier and the third day it was even easier and today I'm really, really tired, but could you tell? No, I, I, it feels great. I really got my arms worked out with the sledgehammer this time. Um, yeah, I enjoyed every second of it. My name is uh, Dominique Trebu. I am from uh, Long Island uh, from, with St. Joseph's College. I am a, a faculty, full professor in the Department of Psychology and the chairperson for the Department of Psych Psychology on the Long Island campus. It certainly beats going to a gym. So that's what I've been doing here is the kids break up the rocks and I lift them from one place to another and help in whichever way I can. Certainly with this group, young people from all over, it's a positive experience because we see on TV how our youth is not productive, tend to be narcissistic, and I think this gives you a different kind of view of young people working and working together towards a common goal. I think it's important for people my age to go out and see the damage in other communities. A lot of people are unaware that people are still out of their houses from Sandy. It is kind of nice knowing I did something productive instead of sitting poolside sipping drinks for a week. This entire area was just all concrete when we got here and we're breaking up the last of it now so it's a really good feeling to know that we were able to accomplish this much. This is the third dumpster we filled in four days. That's three less dumpsters they have to worry about. By helping clear out the gunk they can focus on building a new house. It's not only fun but it's also productive and we're really helping someone who needs it who can't get help from anyone else. By having us here, we're providing just a little bit of hope that things are going to get better. We're going to turn things around, and it's going to get better, and it's going to be get better quickly. Yeah, that one. Well, I think in service there is no age. I mean, you're going to love being with 20-year-olds, 30-year-olds, 40-year-olds, 50-year-olds. It's all good. It's a really good way to meet people and meet new friends and meet people who are similar to yourself and want to volunteer and help others. It was just a great social experience. I got to learn a lot about myself and other communities and other people. Definitely give it a try. Don't be discouraged if you don't have experience. If you do want to learn, there's always someone on hand to help you learn new tasks. And it's not just doing heavy work. Every little bit helps. The only skill that you really need to be ready to have is the ready and willingness to adapt to a new scenario and a new situation. If anyone is looking for a one-of-a-kind experience, this is the absolute best place to do it. The best part is that you're helping people. You can meet the homeowners, you can see the progress you're making. I'm giving my help and service to others and I'm in return I'm learning a lot about myself. Volunteering builds a person, shapes a person, and molds a person. Get the Jersey Shore back on track and people back on their homes if everybody my age gave one week once in their life. If it's just one person here, one person there. It makes a huge, huge difference. Just get out there and do it. Make a difference. It makes me happy helping others. Helping is what I do. kids break up the rocks and I lift them from one place to another and help in whichever way I can and it's been great. It certainly beats going to a gym. This gives you a different kind of view of young people working and working together towards a common goal. I'm in uh, middle age uh, and uh, when you start thinking about what do you want to do, how do you want to live your life, I think this is certainly a productive way. I think in service there is no age. You're going to love it. I mean, you're going to love being with 20-year-olds, 30-year-olds, 40-year-olds, 50-year-olds. It's all good. We're here to help the families, but we help each other out. We get the Jersey Shore back on track and people back on their homes if everybody my age gave one week once in their life. It would be good enough. It's crazy to think how many people are still displaced from Hurricane Sandy, how many families are not back in their homes. I was born in this area, Monmouth County, that was one of the hardest hit areas um, during Hurricane Sandy. Um, I learned about this organization, about St. Bernard Project, 
and AmeriCorps um, when I moved back to New Jersey about 10 months ago and they were looking for individuals to help out the community. Now it's two plus years, which is pretty crazy to think about, um, and people are still out of their houses. There's just a dire need for help in this area and I was willing to uh, add my energy and um, passion to help people who uh, need any help they can get to start their lives back over again. It's been a beautiful run with St. Bernard Project in my court and uh, they taught me a lot and hopefully I've helped as many people out as I can and continue to do so for the rest of my term. I love meeting people from all different walks of life and with volunteering you hear stories and you meet people from a million different backgrounds. It's a great way to uh, learn about a world bigger than your own. You'd be surprised how great it feels after a day of work here um, with this organization and seeing firsthand what you've done, what you've accomplished just in one day. Um, it's really, it's humbling in the best way possible, I think. And uh, don't be afraid to get out of your comfort zone. Some people are scared of volunteering, even with a lack of construction experience with uh, our um, organization in general. Don't be scared. I didn't know much beforehand going in, but I, if I can do it, you can do it. Come out, give your time, give your energy, um, give enthusiasm to help people who, uh, who desperately need it. You know, this place is crying for help and uh, anything you can do to be a part of it. Um, do it and come with us. We're a great organization. We'd love to have you. Baron Builders is my team. It's who, it's who I'm representing. The Washington DC JCC and community service and Baron Builders. Baron Builders specifically going out and making a difference in the lives of homeowners and homeless in DC. I want to be on that team and that is my team because we can take our work and our mission and vision and take it outside of DC. And we're going to the shore and we're going to take the work and the energy that we have here and we're going to put it into the Jersey Shore. For every one of me, and, and you see how my life has been changed. Can you imagine how many other people are like this? You know, our lives are forever changed. And the storm didn't change our lives. The, the storm made our lives better. Uh, the storm to me was a blessing. Um, I became a Christian after the storm. Um, I got baptized in the bay right out there, which was pretty cool. We see so much negative things on, on the news and we read about, you know, how lousy people are. And, 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 it's, and it's true that the world is a really hard, hard place. And other than our faith, all we really have are each other. Our whole town, our whole community is so blessed to have these people come in and just give of themselves. And, and they're just unselfish. It's a small town. It's two square miles, I think, and 2,100 homes or something like that. And 80% of those homes were some type of damage. Um, but the, it's really brought people together closer uh, neighbors that I kind of related to the, the feeling the country had after 9-11 you know and, and you know this was nothing like 9-11 and I don't mean it in that sense just that it brought people together and closer when you do things like this you hold us so tight and that's all I can ask for just that tightness that closeness this is where we belong this is our community this is our home um, and we're not gonna let a storm chase us away you know um, if the powers that be were going to allow us to build and we were blessed by God to be able to rebuild, that's what we're going to do. So, I left my job to, to do this. Uh, when I saw um, how much it had changed my life and how much it had touched me, and uh, I could not go to work every day knowing that this was happening in my town and I wasn't a part of it. So I needed to be a part and so I left my job to, to come do this full time. Just to know that we're not alone gives us the strength, the courage to push on. Uh, there's many times I would have wanted to give up. You know, I would come here, you know, the house is getting close. You see, we're getting close to moving back home. Uh, but there were, you know, times I would come and there was nothing going on. And I had all intentions of doing some work. And I would just come and sit here and just start crying because I just couldn't do it. You know, it just, it was too much for me. Our original house, like many houses in town, uh, Union Beach at one point was a... Um, seasonal type town. Uh, so many of the houses were built in the 40s, 50s, and, and maybe even sooner than that. So they were bungalows and then just kind of added on to as, as families decided to stay here. 
So our house was built in the 40s. Um, this, is, this is a much more modern, this house is built with steel. It's all steel frame um, and it's built to all kinds of hurricane codes, 150 mile an hour winds and things like that. So it's definitely different. You felt the volunteerism in the town. People from town started volunteering because they wanted to help. And you maybe kind of expect that. But when people are coming from all over the country, all over the world, to come and help, you know, give up their time, I think that, that's what brought me to want to do this. And this would also um, change our lives. We have older groups that come in, and it's just it's amazing how people just want to give their time. And I must say it's amazing a thousand times what it is. I can't get over it. It's, it's never about the task when you're volunteering. It, what you're doing has nothing to do with anything. It's the fact that you're here. Um, this is an incredibly daunting task for all of us. And we would never be able to do it alone. My one son, Brock, who I talked about a little bit, he uh, re-enlisted re in the Army. And um, he was in Virginia. And one of the things in the military, when you re-enlist, they'll send you any place where you want to go to take your oath again. He chose here. He came here. There was nothing here. Um, his brother, who's a Marine, read him his oath right out there, that mess out there. Um, that's where he re-enlisted. And they asked him the same question, why are you doing it here? And he said, because this is my home. The need that is always going to be there. You know, it's going to be here in Union Beach. It's going to be in, in Illinois. It's going to be in Mississippi. The need is always going to be there for, for your work. Um, but it's not, again, just the physical type work. So many people need guidance, they need help, they maybe they can't navigate the system and, and so they miss out on opportunities that maybe would help them. So, you know, it's always good to think about those things, you know, that maybe there's a way that I can help a little bit differently than I'm doing. Maybe I'm going to school to be an attorney, maybe I'm going to be a doctor, maybe I want to be an accountant. You know, those types of things, people need that, and, and especially in times of disasters because their, their whole life has been torn apart. and they're, they're lost. I hope that some of you will, will look in the future and say, I want to be a part of that. I want to, I want to continue with this, this you know, the rebuilding effort, not only here, but throughout the country. Check out our team's posts on Twitter, at Shore Volunteers. providing just a little bit of hope that things are going to get better. We're going to turn things around. We have become experts at breaking concrete by this point. And uh, cracking some jokes at the same time. It certainly beats going to a gym. Anyone is looking for a one-of-a-kind experience, this is the absolute best place to do it. Helping is what I do. I enjoy it every second of it. To vote for your favorite team, go to JerseyShoreVolunteers.com. Okay. I had lived in Manhattan, in Lower Manhattan actually, on Water Street. And uh, during Sandy, my uh, apartment building was flooded. And oddly enough, uh, I wound up renting down here for the summer and just never moved. And I uh, wanted to give back to the community and, and try to help uh, Sandy victims because I myself was one. Not in Seabright, but uh, in New York City. It's, uh, it's devastating. You realize how important friends and family are when you have no place to live. Uh, my car was destroyed. A lot of my possessions were gone. Uh, so being able to have people who can help out uh, is great. And then doing something like this and helping people two years after the storm uh, who still are not back is uh, amazing. The, the really tough thing is how shocking it is when you don't have a phone service, no internet, no lights, no food, uh, and you're reliant on other people for that to come back on, and you don't know when that's going to happen, and that, that was it's a very difficult thing. You never know when it can happen to you, and uh, being able to help someone else out who it happened to who may not be as fortunate as someone else, you, you have to do it. And especially when you live in a community that is prone to floods and flooding, um, I, I think it's a, a very good thing to do. Please come help us on the Jersey Shore, uh, still, still ravaged by the effects of Sandy. There's many houses that still are without occupants who have not been back to their homes in over two years. Uh, the more help we can get, the, the better for the community and for the country. One of the things that I love about being Jewish is 
is that it, giving back is one of our values. Tikkun olam, repairing the world. Um, also the word gemilu chasadim, um, making a difference. And the one thing that the DCJCC does, along with our community service department and specifically with this project, Baron Builders, is we make giving back a priority. We wanna not only provide opportunities for volunteers in the community, but we want those volunteers to make a difference in the lives of others. And the DCJCC really stresses tikkun olam and giving back. And that's where Baron Builders gets its mission and vision from. Baron Builders is my team. It's who, it's who I'm representing. The Washington DC JCC and community service and Baron Builders, Baron Builders specifically going out and making a difference in the lives of homeowners and homeless in DC. I wanna be on that team and that is my team because we can take our work and our mission and vision and take it outside of DC. And we're going to the shore and we're gonna take the work and the energy that we have here and we're gonna put it into the Jersey Shore. We've been here at the Jersey Shore for about a week now and it's been, uh, it's been true, uh, truly amazing. By having us here, we're providing just a little bit of hope that things are gonna get better. We're gonna turn things around. I've been volunteering through the Alternative Spring Break trip for about three years now. Uh, outside of that, I try to volunteer as often as I can. It is possibly one of the best experiences a person can get. Not only are you assisting others and helping others get to where they need to be, but you're also helping yourself in a very, in a very self-serving way. You are becoming a better person. Volunteering builds a person, shapes a person, and molds a person in a completely different way than any other experience I know of. The only skill that you really need to be ready to have is the ready and willingness to adapt to a new scenario and a new situation. Just get out there and do it. Make a difference.